Bella Goth is a well-known character within The Sims franchise, and there have been many speculations, rumours, ideas, and theories about her and her whole immediate family. But there is one character in particular that doesn't get the spotlight as much as he should, and that's her older brother, Michael Batchelor. There's something concerning about The Sim, considering there seems to be a clone of him buried deep within the game files. So let's investigate. Hello everyone, and welcome to The Sims Lore. Today, we're taking a look at Bella Goth's brother, Michael Batchelor, and the creepy circumstances in which he might have been cloned. So get your snacks ready, let me know what you're having in that snack report, and don't forget to subscribe and like this if you enjoyed it. Alright, let's get straight into the video. Before we get into the whole mystery, I want to give him a proper introduction. To do this, I will start at the very beginning, not when we're first introduced to him as an adult in the first Sims game, but when he was a teen in The Sims 3. Michael Batchelor is introduced to us as a teen in The Sims 3. He is living with his mother Jocasta, father Simis, and little sister child Bella Goff. Here, he seems to be portrayed as a jock, a typical American sporty teenager. This is reinforced by his bio, which reads, Michael, the ideal son, has lots of friends at school and loves the outside playing any sport. He is a B high school student, and while it says he has lots of friends in school, this isn't true as his only friend outside of his family is Mortimer Goth, Bella's best friend. He loves the outdoors, is a schmoozer, is friendly and athletic. All he wants is to play sports and develop relationships. Other than the fact that he is slightly whitewashed, Michael sort of fits in with the other Michaels in previous games. This is where things start to get a bit interesting. In the first Sims game, Michael Bachelor can be found at the Sim bin, his last name matches his status, Bachelor, an unmarried single man. His relationship to his sister is also unclear since there is no family connection in The Sims 1 and Bella was already married, therefore adopting the name Goth. Michael's bio states that he is just starting out his life fresh out of college and he doesn't know what to do. This doesn't make sense. Let me explain. You might need a notepad. <laughs> in the years after The Sims 3, Michael has supposedly gone to university and graduated. His major is unknown, as is his whole degree, but people have speculated it could be a science degree or major. Chronologically, The Sims is set 25 years after The Sims 3 and 25 years before The Sims 2. So if Michael was a teen in high school 25 years later, he would be well into his late 30s. And yes, you can still go to university in your 30s, which is very possible for him, but many say this doesn't fit the storyline of him starting out in life. The Sims 3 events are recognised as the earliest throughout the chronology of the franchise. This explains Bella being a child, Bob and Betty Newby being teens, and pretty much everyone else being younger than the other Sims games. Well, for the most part, since there are some serious discrepancies. In The Sims 2, which is set 25 years later, we find out that the late Michael managed to live a full life have a successful career, and marry his love, Dina Caliente, but later died of old age. Allegedly. I tried the same thing you do with Bella to resurrect her in The Sims 2, but of course, because Michael didn't actually die in-game and is nowhere in the neighbourhood, he disappears pretty much instantly. Before he could go, I paused and had a look around. He has no relationships in the relationships panel, but is connected to the family tree. Taking all this time into consideration, in The Sims 2, Michael would have only been into his 60s before he passed away from old age. So this makes many people wonder if he either played around with the elixir of life, or more interestingly, was forcefully or willingly cloned. Here are those two theories explained. Many players have speculated that Michael had access to the elixir of life. Some say he even invented it before Mortimer did. Others say he stole Mortimer's recipe or that he got along very well with his brother-in-law and they all made use of it. Considering the elixir is technically available to the public as an aspiration reward, one could say either Mortimer or Michael were the heads behind that. Which would explain how the other sims in the neighbourhood also made use of the elixir somehow. One theory is that he might have gotten his hands on the elixir or developed it himself during university or grad school, 
and reverted to a much younger age, so by the time he graduated, he was much younger. Another theory is that Michael worked together with Mortimer to synthesize the elixir and they both used it to their advantage. This would explain Dina somehow knowing Mortimer. As well as that, we can also look at it this way. What if Michael used the elixir and it aged him, as sometimes that happens when your sim is low on aspiration points? Maybe Dina thought Mortimer had something to do with it and that's why she had her alien family abduct Bella and moved in on Mortimer for his cash. Or maybe it was the other way around and Dina messed up Michael's dosage and killed him to inherit his house. Who's to know? Either way, Dina was and always will be up to no good in my eyes. Speaking of Dina, let's focus a little bit on her and Michael's relationship and see what we can uncover there. It is also speculated that because of the age gap between him and Dina, she only marries him for Michael's money. This is speculated because of the fact that she is a fortune sim. It is worth noting, however, that Michael was Dina's first serious relationship and she began to cheat on Michael with Don just before he died. Also worth noting, even though she's a fortune sim, she should have gotten the married a rich sim memory. However, it's suggested that she fell in love and that's the only reason they married. Based on Dina's memories, she met Michael when she was a teen, then later got married as an adult. If we go by the age gap, Michael must have been an adult when they first met. Gross, Michael. Super gross. After Michael's death, Dina inherits his house and moves her sister Nina in with her. Now, here's the kicker. In Sim P, we find a second Michael bachelor. You can quickly tell which one is the Michael we know in the game, the one married to Dina, connected to the goths and all that. But the second Michael's files is where things get weird. The alleged cloned Michael has interests but no connection to anybody. One of my theories is that the real Michael Bachelor, the alleged clone that is, hid himself and ran away from it all, leaving his actual clone to deal with his adult life, i.e. married Dina, died and all of that stuff. Because the Michael who was married to Dina actually has relationships to Bella, Cassandra, Alexander and his deceased parents, Simis and Jocasta. Interestingly, the alleged real Michael has lived less than the NPC who has no interests or ties to anyone. Meaning this theory could be correct. Of course then there is the theory of the whole thing being a bug. Michael is the 204th Sim created, whereas his alleged clone is the 49th. Somehow, the 49th Sim is not considered the real Michael, even though he was made before. Why couldn't the developers connect that Michael to the rest of his family? Why make a new Michael? If there is already a Michael connected and all that, why keep the old one? The discrepancies, the clone theory, his weird relationship with Dina, it could all be an overlooked mess. So maybe trying to make sense of someone's mistake and overlooked details is a waste of time. But where's the fun in that? Alright guys, there you have it. Lots of info on Michael Bachelor and his strange life. I hope you enjoyed this and let me know your theories and findings in the comments below. I would like to thank my Soul Soul channel members Jiggly and Chrissy Pine. Thank you both for your support. I would also like to thank my patrons Whitney Marion, Papa Khan, Negative Dana, Aurora Grimm, LeMay, ML, Alia Deshayes, Shelby Hill, Perlog Anwil, Kitajan the Arcane Archer, Nicole Dante, Artsy Flashback, Nathan Lim, and Asmina. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your theories in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more lore and updates. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!